let's do it. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, thank you for um, inviting me to speak. It's good to to be here, and like it's cool that there's events happening, even though we're all kind of locked down and in our houses as well. It's good to keep in the loop. Um, I'm going to be talking about building composable with composable data and user identity, identities uh, with three box. So, uh, if you don't me this, if you don't know me, this is me. I'm Rachel Black. I'm the DevRel lead uh, over at Three Box. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. Please follow me. I always like more followers. Um, yeah, so that's that's going to kicked off. So this is kind of the problem statement, and this is really not news to anyone, um, whether they're kind of in our industry or outside of our industry. But we really know that user data is broken on the web. Um, and what does this mean? So for users, of course, they're very fearful. They really don't have any transparency over what's happening to their data, and they have no agency. And there's a lot of security risks to them. They're always Every day, we're kind of hearing about new hacks and uh, data exposure, et cetera. But likewise, for developers, it's not a smooth path either because there's a lot of complexity that has to go into kind of managing user data um, for applications. And this could often be stuff that's not really part of your kind of core value proposition. Hopefully, you're not building a kind of data mining application, although, as we know, a lot of the internet is running on that business model. Um, but often you are having to kind of have all this infrastructure and manage all this data because you need users, um, but it's not really the core value proposition of what you're trying to deliver. So that can be pretty demotivational for developers, and obviously there's risks involved uh, with doing that as well. So what we are proposing is, and it's not just Rebox, but this is kind of the vision of the, the world of kind of decentralized identity um, generally, but it's it's kind of going from um, what we see over on this side of the screen, um, which is what we have today, or what we've been used to with like larger with Web two, um, where data is really user data is really organised around applications. So when we join when we join any site, we're always creating a new profile, adding user data to that specific site, be it Facebook, government site, Match, or whatever. Um, and then we're actually going to shift over to what we see on the other side of the screen here, which is actually more around user data being under the control of users and applications reading that data as and when they need it or as and when the user gives them access to it. So it's really kind of quite a big shift in terms of how we architect things and how we think about things um, in terms of user data there. Uh, so I've already mentioned uh, this is this kind of paradigm shift is being powered by a decentralized identity. Uh, of course, we're not the only people in this space, um, but it's very much been kind of lineage of where we've come from. The three box founders, they originally um, in Newport and now kind of taking this knowledge into, into the three box as well. So what does this give users? Um, so users get a lot more agency, pretty much all the good stuff, agency, transparency, empowerment. We can give them cryptographic control and data that can be used across applications, which is, which is really nice because we're kind of building the systems that don't have the same lock-in that we've seen with Web2, um, and data can be used kind of more interoperability and across, and across different applications. It can also be users obviously don't have to, users can obviously have granular control of their data, so they don't have to kind of give all of their data to every single site. They can choose which data they'd like to disclose to who. Um, Hopefully, this will be a really good one. Um, it can stop user data being the product, and we can actually build applications that offer true value rather than kind of tricking our users into using our service and actually, you know, making a lot of uh, making a lot of money off their 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 data, and 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 that should really belong to them. So, coming to uh, three box and three box user data cloud. I'll give you just a kind of high level of the kind of tech that's involved and, and how, at a very high level, how Streetbox uh, works. So it's basically integratable with any Web3 wallet, so MetaMask, Portis, um, any, any Web3 enabled wallet. Um, and then from that, we basically, we work with wallets because you know, we're not in the business of creating a wallet and actually there's a lot of other people who are out there doing it already better than us. Um, so we want to work within those systems. Um, but what will happen is a user will sign a message um, with the cryptographic key pair from their wallet, and then um, that signed message, we derive the DID and the keys around the, the DID. In three boxes case, we call it three ID, but it's a decentralized identifier as, as part of the spec. 
Um, and then um, that lives on the user's machine. Um, we, we don't hold that. That just stays in, in, in local storage for the user. Um, and that's used to encrypt and sign data, which is stored on IPFS. Um, so we're kind of using that technology there. We also use OrbitDB to give IPFS a kind of database structure. Um, so we're using key value store and I think an append, append log as well. Um, and then down at the bottom, you can have your decentralized application, which can use um, our three box JS API, which will allow, um, which will allow um, your application to access data that the users have stored um, within this three box ecosystem. Of course, that will all be under the consent of the data the user wants to give access to, um, but providing users um, are, are, you know, clicking that they agree to share their data, um, then the front end of your application will be able to read that. So that's a very high level um, of what we do. This is really cool because it shows you that actually with three box, you can start to build applications that use data rather than manage it. And this is great for developers because it kind of frees up a lot of the kind of headache that we spoke about at the beginning of all the complexity, all the time, all the you know worry and risk of kind of managing data. With this system, you go actually much freer to just focus on the value out of what you're building. So we can see here, we've got your awesome DAP. We know there's a lot of awesome DAPs around, so that's cool. Um, so you have your application logic. Maybe you're using uh, some blockchain, whether that's for payments or in another use. Um, and then... Um, you have a you have the user they have a, a key pair whether that's in a wallet um, and then you have the three ID over here on the other side we can see actually every all of all of the kind of decentralized it, all of the all of the decentralized identity and all the decentralized infrastructure that three box is bringing you so using the system um, you're gonna have you're gonna be able to access um, the data that users store in the distributed storage um, we also have some messaging and chat APIs as well. I'll come on to talk to that in a minute, but, um, all of this stuff is kind of accessible, um, for you to use kind of with very low touch and it's really about using it rather than managing it. So you don't need to kind of, uh, run this infrastructure. You don't need to, it's not really what you are managing. So it's, it's really an easy way to kind of, um, integrate the stuff and actually will save you a lot of time and you can have a lot more time to focus on on what you're building. For developers, uh, this means you can get distributed database storage. Again, it's really nice because you don't have to run your own IPFS nodes. You don't have to figure out how to use OrbitDB. We've done that and it's all kind of abstracted away from the end developer. You can just use our API um, and that will kind of um, access that for you. So it's a, a really nice... Um, minimal way for developers to, for developers to interact with those um, services. We can also build uh, data rich applications. And this is particularly true if we think about like, what's possible if we were just to use say a smart contract, um, clearly, it's not um, suitable. And we know that you know, there's a lot of data that you want to have off chain. Um, your other option could be like maybe putting it in a centralized server, but I guess, you know, a lot of applications don't want to do that. Um, or you could be, you know, configuring your own IPFS nodes and storing the data in there. But again, there's a lot of overheads in terms of setting that up and it's, you know, IPFS and it's, it's pure form is just really file storage. And, and then you'd also still have to do the connecting up of user identities to that data. Um, with three box, you can actually start to build these data rich applications that are much more uh, similar to the kind of web two applications that your users will be familiar with that, um, and really expecting to use. Um, so you can start to start to build, um, yeah, there's much more data rich applications and it's really exciting. There's a lot of possibilities here and I'll show you some of our APIs and, and some of the stuff that is possible. But what I really like is you can actually work with all of this using just front end code. So it's great for people like me. Um, as I was a React developer um, before I got into DevRel. Um, and it's really nice to kind of have everything kind of front end um, and yeah, just easy to kind of get going with. So I'll give you a quick overview of our development tools. So we have uh, Spaces and our Profiles API. And so Spaces is Spaces and Profiles are actually kind of quite similar. I think Profiles was the first one that we launched with. And, 
those of you who've been following three box since we started um, just about a year and a half ago will know that this is the kind of first API that we launched with and providing global profiles, global avatars, um, and global kind of profile data for the Ethereum space was our first was our first kind of value proposition or our first, our first offering. It's really nice because it means that um, once users have set up their profile data once in 3Box, whether that's using um, 3Box Hub or whether that's like natively an application that you've built, wherever they've done that, that profile data will be pulled into any um, application that's using uh, 3Box. So it, it makes it um, very very easy for users to kind of feel familiar. They're going to see their avatar, they're going to see their name, and it's it's much nicer than you know, looking at hex codes or continually having to create the same profile that we always you know use generally across those applications so that was that was the first thing that we launched with data in profiles can is obviously user controlled and users can e data can either be stored in a public so that's unencrypted or it could be private so you can store data in a encrypted way of course if we're storing it um, encrypted then the users would have to consent uh, to access that as well and then we also have Spaces API. So Spaces API is actually quite similar to Profiles, but it's really designed to be more context specific and less global. So typically, if you were building your own application, you'd probably create a space for it. You might even want to go more granular than that and then create like spaces within the application depending on, on your use case. But once again, we can see that um, we can have either private or public uh, storage in there. Both Profiles and Spaces are using a key value storage. So that's pretty much the data structure we use. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty familiar for most developers and it's it's a nice way to kind of store off-chain data in a user-centric way. And then we also have threads. So threads um, is where we can start to have like collaborative data. So this is really where we want to, if we want to have groups of people communicating, whether that's um, messaging or whether it's more kind of content feeds, um, threads is the APIs that you'd want to use. And we have quite a number of different threads. There's actually a more recent one, which um, isn't on here, but I'll talk you through what we've got. So we have persistent threads. Persistent threads are threads that are persisted on IPFS. So it's really good for, I think, things like uh, social media feeds where you always want to make sure the data is available. Um, um, of course, you know, yeah, so it's always available. Um, we also have ghost uh, threads. So ghost threads are not persisted. So they are just using IPFS PubSub, and that's a pure peer-to-peer in-memory messaging API. So that's super fast. Um, and it can actually be really good for things where maybe, you know, you don't want to persist it to IPFS. We had uh, a DMV demolisher um, uh, submission at uh, Denver, which was all about sharing kind of IDs and credentials um, over uh, ghost threads. And of course, nothing was persisted. So there was a little bit of extra kind of um, security for the users in that sense. Um, but of course, it's not right for everything. You wouldn't want to put like a social media feed into a ghost thread because you want to make it sure that's available and, and your users can access it. Um, and we also um, launched confident confidential threads. We launched this in February. Um, confidential threads is basically uh, it's it's using asymmetric encryption so that we're encrypting data for the members or the participants participants of those threads. And for each of these threads, there's different. You can break them down. They can either be like public and open, or you can have like members. There's various different ways that you can configure it based upon your your use case and, and your need as well. Um, and then finally, over here we have plugins. So uh, plugins is when we were building three box, we kind of we noticed that there's kind of functionality that's kind of used um, pretty much ubiquitously, and it's things like having a profile hover component. Of course, when you're using profiles, you want to kind of have that nice like low touch. Oh, I've just clicked on the profile, and I can see you know the user's uh, avatar, I can see their name, and it's looking a lot more user friendly than just kind of a hex code that we might use. Um, so we've created React components that are pretty much kind of drop in, very easy to use great for hackathons um, and fun to play around with. I think it's if you're new to three box and you just kind of want to get a feel for, for what's possible and hack something together kind of quickly, it's it's good. Of course, it's also, yeah, these are production uh, plugins, so you can use them in your production app as well. Um, we also have comments, chat box, and profile edit as well. So you can embed 
editing a profile directly in the application as well. Um, we also have this, so I'm not going to talk too much about um, ceramic, um, just because um, it's kind of a little bit out of scope of this talk, um, but it's something that launched uh, recently and it's a big launch for us. It is actually separate to 3Box, so ceramic uh, protocol is its own like independent protocol. 3Box will use it, um, but it's also open and, and like we'll have other people using it and it's kind of a collaborative space, so it's definitely not um, something that's living underneath three is some it's not something that's living underneath three box but it is something that three box will use um, and essentially it's a way to kind of create decentralized documents so this is a uh, great well we we um, it was developed initially because we had a need to have decentralized uh, did documents um, at the moment three box when we started we had more kind of uh, progressive decentralization approach. So we had, we have, and it's still in use at the moment, we're going to be uh, shifting over to ceramic uh, in the next few uh, sprints, but we had a, an address server which kind of uh, connected the, the mappings um, there as well. But this uh, ceramic, we wanted to decentralize that up, but then we also realized it's actually possible to kind of make this more abstract and there's a lot more flexibility in terms of uh, documents that could be uh, built built using that and and a lot of you know a lot of opportunity there um but yeah i don't want to go into this too much uh but i will say actually i might be able to share this quickly oh. um I'll, sh I'll give you this link because um we're actually going to be uh running a i open up the chat room um so we will have to be in the discord in uh, okay, cool. Let me just quickly open Discord. So, um, and just either put it in general or in MetaTrack. MetaTrack might make more sense. Um, um, or send it to me afterwards and I'll share it. I'll send it to you because, yeah, I think actually, okay, cool. Um, uh, yeah, but basically, we're going to have a technical webinar uh, on Thursday. So, I think it's at 9, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, Joel Senna will be there. They're going to kind of do like a technical deep dive. So it's if you are interested in ceramic, I definitely recommend signing up for that because um can go into a lot more of kind of how it works and the, the use cases of it as well. Um, but it's really exciting, something that actually does open up a lot of possibilities and, and goes much more beyond just how 3Box will use it and be, you know, a really kind of beneficial thing for like interoperability in the industry generally. Um, oh yeah, I was also going to say this, um, we are sponsoring Dragon Quest Hackathon, which is um, happening at the moment. Um, so we have a thousand die for best three box integration. So if you're not doing that already, you should be. Um, it's a perfect thing to do during uh, during lockdown. Um, but yeah, just jump onto that. Um, I was also going to show you, let me just share my screen. So kind of coming back to like the original um, topic, um, which was kind of, which was using uh, decentralized identity and composable data. I wanted to show you a recent uh, three box integration, which is sabler.me, which is really cool because um, it's a really nice application anyway. I'm just going to pop it over. Here we go. Um, so basically, this is, um, I'll just share the screen. Cool. So um, it's kind of pretty much modeled on PayPal.me. Um, so you can use Sabler to kind of stream um, crypto to, to somebody else who has an, an ENS name. But what was really nice about it, and it kind of shows just how actually uh, profiles can make things a lot more familiar and actually already open up a really nice user experience for, for your users. So when I first came to this, I just saw it look like this. Um, and all I needed to do was just click. Um, and already, because I've already set up my three box profile, it was already there for me. So I could see my um, avatar, I could see my username. Um, so it's really nice that this data is there and you can kind of tap in and, and use it as an application developer um, there as well. Um, but yeah, 
I've got Um, and also, whilst we're here, I was also going to just show you um, Three Box Hub because I think it's also a useful place to get started with if you're not familiar with uh, Three Box and you can kind of see functionality that is possible. Um, share again. Um, so once I log in, and hopefully this will be quick, I know sometimes with, I mean, with Zoom, it's a, a nightmare, but hopefully this uh, this uh, video software will be better than that. Um, but once you log in, you can see your user profile. You can edit it um, there in 3box Hub. Um, you can see our chat box uh, plugin as well. Um, and it's really... It's really just kind of an overview of what's possible. We built this to kind of demo what you could build with three box. Um, so it's definitely not the kind of, it's not the, that's, it's not all that's possible. Um, but it, you can see easily like the stuff that you can drop into, into applications as well. So here we can see my profile here. Um, and we can also see chat box. This is one of the plugins that I mentioned. And this is the one that's using our ghost threads API. So it's really nice for, just dropping a troll box in and your users can talk um, and yeah, just adding a little bit more sociability and functionality there as well. Um, oh yeah, I can see some messages coming in. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's it really. I think um, my, my talk is a little short today. Um, I've had to, um, I'm having to travel back to the UK for some family reasons. So it's all been a bit, hectic um but i'm also happy to take any questions or um talk a little bit or share some links if people want them as well um so we haven't had any um questions over in discord i don't know if there are any questions in here so just let me know if there are I'll let um, that room. I was going to say, so yeah, if you send me all of the links, then I can post them in, in the Discord for, for everyone. Um, and also it might be useful if you want to also tweet any of the links, like attach to the tweet that um, Parallel Polis tweeted okay. with your name in like your um, speaker slot. That might also be a, an interesting one. Okay, cool. I will send you this now, actually, on um, do you on Telegram, is that okay? Yeah, yeah that's uh, fine, and I'll just um, pull them into Discord. That's not a problem. Cool. Um, and then that's interesting with um, ceramic, because I saw that going live. When was that? It was only a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's like just like two weeks ago. We had... Yeah. Um, we had the first community call on that on Thursday, so it's um, which was kind of more of like an overview and mm -hmm. and just first intro. Um, but this Thursday we're going to be doing like Joel's going to be doing a kind of deep tech dive as well. So it's a okay. great place. If we're kind of interested to find out a little bit more about how it works as well. Um, but no, we're super excited. I think it's, I mean, it's it's great for like three box to kind of be decentralized in this way. But I think what's more exciting in terms of like what it opens up just generally beyond like just DID, you can have like uh, service packs you can have like I think there's like many ideas actually that we probably haven't thought of um, but kind of having these distributed um, documents can be very powerful interesting um, do you have a recording of that first call that you guys um, I, will, I think I'm pretty sure there will be one actually because um, that would also be super useful again for just like an overview to maybe look at before this call on Thursday next week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I will. Um, I will ping that over to you. And also, okay. if you're not, we have a ceramic Discord now. Um, so if you're not in it already, also I'll I'll send a link to that as well because there's sure. a lot of um, there's a lot more context in there as well. Um, and it's gonna yeah, that's where most of the ceramic conversation will go because we, you know, it is a kind of separate kind of. Um, Entity. Yeah, exactly. Then three box. Okay. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, 
And I guess in terms of the the hackathon that you mentioned, are you doing anything with ceramic or is it just the three box bounty? No, it is three box. So it's more about just using our API. So three box, we have a three box JS, which is kind of the main one that I'd imagine people would use, which is for uh, DApp developers. Um, you can also use the plugins. You could um, use Identity Wallet, which is something I didn't speak about, but Identity Wallet is um, our API for, for wallets. Um, so if you want to build kind of a wallet or if you want to integrate it in with wallet, then you can do that. Um, but I think most people will probably be using 3box.js because it's more, our bounty um, for medical tail is for um, best overall 3box integration. Okay. Kind of seeing as more of a kind of traditional, like build a cool application. Obviously we're looking for applications that are kind of using 3box in like a meaningful and substantial way. Um, also looking for applications that have good user experience. Um, and um, yeah, I think wow factor. We want something kind of fun and exciting as well. Um, so yeah, oh, functionality. That was the other one as well. So we <laughs> well, I think yeah. ingredients for adoption. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's, it's um, I'm really excited to see just what's coming out of Dragon Quest as well. It seems like there's a pretty awesome community over there as well. Um, yeah, and I know you're also involved in this. Yeah, we're, um, we're very much focusing on that UX element. And I think for me in particular, having been to so many different hackathons since 2018, since the beginning of 2018, I am really enjoying seeing how much more teams um, look at UX and at functionality and at usability um, mm -hmm. used to, you know, two years ago or even one year ago. Mm, mm. So it's very nice to see people really building for um, really building solutions for problems and really thinking, okay, we need normal users to be able to to look at this and then understand what they need to do. It, yeah, it definitely. I agree with you. I think it definitely does feel that it's kind of matured quite a lot. Um, you know, particularly almost in the last six months, like at East Denver, East London. It's like a lot of these tools are here now that you can. So I think before it was like there wasn't so many tools that you could build something usable in a short period, like a hackathon, but there are tools like three box, um, a lot of other tools that make it actually, um, possible to kind of build stuff that looks more familiar to users and you don't kind of need a cryptography degree to figure out, which is good. Exactly. And I think the more we do, you know, the, the educational pieces and the more we enable, the um the hackers to tap into the material the apps like make them aware of what is out there um even like you mentioned in london there are so many people at east london that had never been to a, a blockchain hackathon or a hackathon mm -hmm. stop mm -hmm. and were able to build things mm -hmm. which was problematic like a year ago or something in, oh, in, that in was impossible yeah. come on yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It was nice. It definitely feels like it's becoming like a bit more product and a little bit less like dev tools. Yes. Which is getting closer to the end user for sure.